the container, so it's kind of... Enemy in the container! Oh, well. Thank you for yeah, pretty much confirming what I just said. There I am. And now I recited. Somewhere in Minnesota. It's cold. It's like 18 degrees. Negative 18 degrees outside right now. 80 pop fun. My first job was on Madden, uh, Madden 20. Chris Force Davis, and I'm the founder of the Black Gamer League. And what the Black Gamer League is, is a networking community, online-based networking community. Um, where we're just, our main focus is connecting Black content creators, gamers, entertainers, uh, really the whole spectrum of uh, Black content creation. So um, whatever that means to each individual, you know, each individual person, you know, that's kind of what we focus on. We want to connect and, and try to make things happen with our own community. Uh, I'm also a professor of sport management. Um, I work at HBCU, a teacher at HBCU. Um, and, you know, all of my kids would be talking about gaming. I teach, uh, you know, different topics on esports. And I just saw that there was a need. Uh, this is probably about uh, three years ago now, close to, close to four, that I was just teaching in my class. And I saw that I had a lot of gamers, but they didn't know anything about the, you know, the technical side of gaming the business side of gaming. They didn't know even how to connect with other gamers that weren't their direct friends. You know, you might know a little something about connecting online just through regular social media, but they didn't know that there was such a, a huge world out there of people that play games, but did more um, behind the scenes and, 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 you know, actually had careers off of, um, you know, gaming in general. So, um, I, I first made my company um, force management group um, in order to start helping with content creation, content creators really find their way, find their niche, um, you know, basically a management company. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I was like, man, you know, I'm finding all these people, but I want to connect, you know, more black people together. I know I'm seeing all these people that I know, but they don't know each other. And I think that's a problem. You know, we oh. all should be helping each other. So I made the Black Gamer League just as a small group on Facebook. Um, and and I, I don't, I, I, I really, honestly, I forget how it happened, but from Facebook, we went and I made my Twitter page and that's when we really um, blew up. You know, Twitter's reach is uh, is crazy when it comes to users so mm -hmm. we we found obviously uh, you know in 90 right now we're sitting at 3600 followers and they're all black people all black gamers is you know it's all organic mm -hmm. um and and that's not even the tip of the iceberg of what's out there so we're just a small part but we're you know we're doing our part to try to push the network forward and um get more of our people out there on the forefront and work together what's your ultimate goal like hopefully like what do you kind of want to see that morph into kind of as you kind of progress that and as that community sort of grows? Well, you know, I mean, honestly, that, that that's a great question. Just for the fact of uh, for the last, like I said, three going on four years, it started off as a small group. We mm -hmm. kind of elevated to different things over different times, but uh, more so recently we came out with our um, platform initiative project. And basically what that is, is we built up uh, over these last three years, our platform on, you know, uh, Twitter, obviously that's our main source, um, any other social media, Instagram, Twitch, where, you know, we have our stream team, mm -hmm. um, they actually, we have a group of streamers that are Black Game Release stream team and they'll stream on our channel. So, you know, we're just trying to push that representation, but, um, you know, basically with us being able to spread out and connect with different people for platforms, we've opened up our platform to the best way to say it is anybody mm -hmm. anybody that is you know falls into the category obviously we're promoting black you know black people and black content mm -hmm. so if you're a black content creator you know we're lending our platform any any part of our platform to you so if you want to go on our twitch and stream on our twitch we have like i said we have our team but anyone can sign up to get a slot to stream on the twitch mm -hmm. that way that you know if you're a new streamer, you can be 
fresh out the box, day one. We're going to let you hop on and let you get exposure and let people see you that may not see you maybe until later down the line or or if we can just expedite that process. So right. that's, you know, that's one of the many things like Twitter, you know, we want people to use our Twitter spaces. So like any t- platform that we have, Instagram, anything, we're going to promote positive Black messages. We're going to promote gaming, esports, the business and showing more people, um, you know, that they have people that are like them, that are doing the things they want to do. Or mm-hmm. like I said, they can connect easier. So um, with the platform initiative, we're really excited about that because it's uh, kind of grounded us back into what we originally were created for. And that is to network, period. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people doing a whole lot of different things and everything is added to the space, but we had to find the thing that we were going to do. Everyone, will, you know, you can always fall into the category of, uh, you know, groups being similar or, or doing things, you know, we're going to be an esport org. Okay, that's cool. Right. But everyone doesn't have to be an esport org. Mm-hmm. Everyone doesn't have to, you know, have a team for this or blah, blah, blah. So it's like, we just found our, our, our pathway where we can help the most people and stay true to ourselves. It's easy to want to do more, but we, we figured, you know, focusing on the network, we can, we can make much more of an impact. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, beyond that, uh, we're just kind of going from online uh, mm-hmm. to in-person events. So it's all about networking. So we're having networking events leading up to huge, huge networking events, but it's all based around networking and making sure that we can build, as you said, networking is key, you know, mm-hmm. for everything you do. So yep. why not really make that a focus, not just brush over it, you know, mm-hmm. in the gaming space, like, yeah, it's, some, it's something simple, but people need help networking and people need help finding people. So we're going to be that piece. Seeing any type of, I don't know, like trends, patterns, as far as like between like the kids you're teaching and like the things that like are kind of on the forefront, you know, we kind of got all of this meta stuff coming and all of this VR Mm -hmm. and, you know, Mm -hmm. just these different type of platforms are starting to create themselves. Are you starting to see anything kind of like similarities as far as like tracing our way back from the video games we used to play, you know, all the different type of things that we have played to kind of, as we kind of progress into the future, are you kind of seeing any patterns, any things that you're kind of liking, uh, anything that's kind of, you know, piquing your interest? One of my favorite movies is uh, Ready Player One. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you're familiar with Ready Player One, um, Mm -hmm. I love the fact that we're coming out with more, you know, VR, you know, specific titles to, you know, sitting there uh, in front of a screen, playing the game now to being immersed in the game. I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I don't know what to call it, but uh, one of those people that I enjoy thinking about the future, you know, right. uh, mm-hmm. you know, back, back to the future, you know, like see the craziness of seeing things that we're not used to being developed and Mm -hmm. being so close to what the sci-fi movies were portraying like Mm -hmm. years and years ago is crazy to me. So like being able to immerse yourself, get your own VR headset and really, you know, dive into the world, like what Meta is doing, obviously they're doing a whole lot of other things. Very interesting to me because, Mm -hmm. you know, we've seen our development from, the type of games we had, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a 90s uh, guy. So back in the 90s, you know, all the way up to now, we've had a lot of advancement. We have a lot of, um, you know, changes with, you know, technology that's make the games better, graphics, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the possibilities is what I enjoy. Right. Um, you know, the, the possibilities of what can come next or what type of games we can end up playing. Mm-hmm. Um with all the new technology, you know, not just with VR, but just in general, like the technology today is crazy. And I feel like it's going to kind of accelerate. We're at that point where um, the things we're seeing and the, the things we're seeing developers create and the, you know, the the groundbreaking that they're doing on, you know, for different games is amazing. So I just think it's going to keep on being great. You think these kids are kind of thinking as they are kind of starting to come through now? Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure they're thinking a lot differently now, maybe five to 10 years ago when really these programs really weren't even developed yet. Man, one of the biggest things that stands out across the board is the, if, especially we're talking about youth, if these kids are, they're understanding um, 
the different pathways they can take. They understand that they can make a living off of using sh social media. And that's one of the biggest things that across the board has changed for, and really that's not even with kids, that's with everybody. Like mm -hmm. social media is coming so strong and it's become such a part of our society that like now people understand, oh, I don't necessarily have to do a traditional job. If I'm funny, I can make videos. If I am creative, I can post my content and get people to look at me. I can make a business from my phone. Um, if we're going back to gaming, I can be, I can become a very well-known gamer just by promoting myself and like making money. So it's just the fact that there is factual information and stats to tell you you can make a living off of doing these things. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different from like uh. I, I, I feel like we're similar age. So it's mm -hmm. a lot different from when we were, you know, teenagers still coming up where it was like, you know, the stability of traditional jobs. 2022, think about a kid in high school in 2022, you got, you, you, you so exposed to, you, you know, good, good and bad. You're exposed right. to so much because of technology, but it does offer those like supreme opportunities for anyone to forge their own path. And I think that's, I think that's really, really um, interesting and cool because no one has to necessarily be stuck. And if you find something that you're good at, you can now profit up off of it or at least build your way just mm -hmm. by starting it. You know, it, now is that old school saying of, you know, you just have to start like, but for real, now is like the best time to start because you have all the tools in your, you know, all of us have phones. You have all the tools right here. It's yeah. not just that they have, the, the youth have the um they they have the material they have the resources to do it people successfully doing it and mm -hmm. I think that makes a difference too if you mm -hmm. actually believe that you can do it and they they do because they can see it where do you see kind of like the best you know avenues for improvement where do you think improvement could come you know more like uh, like what do you just kind of see forecasting like as far as like black gamers and black people within the gaming industry. One of my biggest things, um, one of the, one of the main reasons why I made the Black Gamer League is because as a Black gamer, I was in I wasn't aware of how many other Black gamers are out there and what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So, I think that being in this space, I get to see a whole lot more. Um, I would say Black activity than normal people. I follow a whole bunch of people. I have connections. You know, my Black Gamer League group is connected with other groups. So I think that I. I see it more because I put it in the forefront, mm -hmm. but I also, because of Black Gamer League, I have people come in that are just as wild at finding us and they don't even know anything about everyone else that we're connected to. Right. So it's like, once you, it's like the importance of groups like mine and other Black, you know, content creators, individuals that are out there promoting their stuff is like, we give people a chance to see that there are other people out there that they can connect with. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's one of the biggest things. We just need to know that they're there. Interview uh, spaces like yourself, like what you're doing, you're, you're giving um, exposure to different groups of people that may have never known that this was out there. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, kind of the answer to the question we're going to keep growing as people because the more people recognize that, oh, there are other people that don't know anything about this complete world that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay, what can I do to get them in here? What mm -hmm. can I do to, to you know, create exposure for myself or for other groups that I like, or just what can I do to benefit other people? <laughs> it's the same thing of when you're introduced to something, it doesn't matter what it is, you're introduced to something completely new that you never heard of, and then when you enter, when you're introduced, you find out there's a whole following behind it. So like, kind of just like talk a little bit about yourself, like as far as like mm -hmm. what games like you used to play growing up, mm -hmm. uh, kind of what got you passionate about gaming? And no problem. Um, so uh, I've been a gamer my whole life. Uh, the earliest game I can remember um, playing was, uh, I remember myself going up to the screen with the gun. It, uh, it's the classic Duck Hunt, original Nintendo. Mm -hmm. So that's when they had the, you know, the the, the rectangle, uh, rectangle controllers, mm -hmm. and that, like I said, mentioned Duck Hunt. Like we had a little the orange, the orange gun that I don't right. know, you know, had, you had to really put it up to the screen. To, yeah. I don't know how anybody else was doing it. Way. 
that for sure, playing the classic games. My, I, I honestly, I can't remember if it was my granddad's or my um, my uncle's system at the time. But either way, I was playing uh, playing the classic games, the first Mario, um, Fro Frogger, things like that. And then my first personal system came Christmas. I wish I could give you a year, but it was a Super Nintendo. I got the I got the big uh, deluxe Donkey Kong Country Super Nintendo pack. So it was the it was oh, okay. the Super Nintendo came with the the original Donkey Kong Country, um, and that was one of my first uh, childhood moments where I was trying to beat a game. I, I like I feel like I was kind of playing around in Mario. You know, I'm a kid. Um, this mm -hmm. is definitely single digit. So. Um, when I got when I got Donkey Kong Country, that's when I I feel like I really got into it. Um, and then I was exposed to uh, you know NBA Live and and Madden, um, you know playing against my uncles and things like that. So uh, I really feel like it. That's kind of affected how I play games today. I, I'm a big sports game guy. Um, I like I love building uh, franchises on you know in, in either 2K or Madden. Mm -hmm. um, and then I like simple adventure games. I'll say I'm not one of those guys where uh, the harder it is, the the more I enjoy. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> not me, not me. Like uh, you no know, classic games. Like like I said, Donkey Kong. Then um, you know, let's skip forward a little bit. Like the PlayStation, like Crash Bandicoot. Now, classic games, those are the things I enjoy, that that fun aspect. Mm -hmm. um, so now, you know, uh, kind of jumping jumping forward, still playing the sports games. I like I like third-person shooters. I, I'm really um, big on Rogue Company. Uh, that's one of my favorite third-person shooters games. Um, I do love Fortnite. Um, just, I love Fortnite for, for, for different reasons. One, the, it's fun, period. They merge so much of... Uh, um, pop culture in two now, they've gotten in trouble uh with stealing you know dances and things like that and then yeah. not giving credit which you know it's it's one of those up up and down things it's like they're a big company you right. expect them to to mess up uh, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately yeah. I mean, like yeah. you expect them to mess up taking more steps to be a little more transparent with where they get their their things from but um just the the aspect of them, you know, bringing so many, you know, cultural uh, skins into the game, dances, things like that, that the kids like, you know, really relate to. It's no wonder they're, you know, so popular. And the game's fun, like I said. Um, and then kind of like my my, cat, my my catalog is honestly really random. I play what I want to play. Um, I think once I really got into this space being you know with the black gamer league mm -hmm. i have members that play all types of things this exposed me to you know kind of what we're talking about right. we, this exposed me to games i had never even you know heard of or types of games i never thought of you know playing you mm -hmm. know league of legends um you know games like stardew valley you know where it's like really relaxing games it's like mm -hmm. oh there's different spectrums that you you know can find in the gaming world so right. um um so that you know not to lose my train of thought but you know now i'm on xbox you know next gen um enjoying enjoying all the updates but yeah man i, I kind of feel like i play everything depending on what i need to uh how i need to social you know yeah. socialize you know yeah. my friends are playing something now play it and you know it kind of go from there but it, it's up in the air now what you're looking forward to as far as like coming up or in the future mm -hmm. if you kind of want to plug something you know kind of this is floor is yours okay um well uh one i appreciate you having me on some other black people doing things that we necessarily don't have to do to right, help right. other people you right. know so so anytime i you know find other people that are helping and, and pushing uh pushing us forward I, I i always enjoy and i really appreciate you having me on oh so, you know anyone that's checking us out just follow us on you know social medias black gamer league um and really just help us promote other people like it you, we you know we want to we want you to come in join the family we're going to help you uh we're going to help you grow but we want people to come in and, and be like-minded and, and and be encouraging towards other people's growth and potential in this space too um mm -hmm. even you know one person can make all the difference you know right. so it not to sound cliche but it's, it definitely takes a toll on you 
And it's a big responsibility for people like us who are trying to help and, and do things that um, can push everything forward. But um, I enjoy it. <music>